So basically what we need to know is, is the starter healthy? Well, we can use a lab scope to be able to look at the signal and tell whether or not the starter is healthy, whether or not it's aging and showing signs, whether or not it's about to fail. We're going to give you a few examples of that now. Now I'm going to show you a signal and then we'll go back and actually look at how to set the scope up. So crank the engine. Now I'm going to stop that, okay, and I'm going to move it back a little bit. Now I've got two channels going here. You can see the yellow, which is on channel one, is on voltage. This is with the key off when we're reading about 12 something, 12 to 13 volts. The green is reading zero. That's on amps. Now when we come over here and actually crank the engine, now you can see what happens. We got a voltage drop. We started at 12 and the yellow came down to somewhere around eight and a half or nine. And then the green was at zero and it spiked up for the amps. Now the thing what you want to look for in here, I'm just going to separate these so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to move the yellow up. So you can see our voltage drop. We started at 12, we came down to about 9 volts or so. Now what you're looking for is to see this the voltage drop should come up and start leveling off. And you can see little bitty voltage drops down there that correspond to the starter. This is amps. Very much like if we're looking at a fuel pump, trying to see if we've got a good healthy fuel pump, looking for dropouts or something like that. So we're at zero. Right here is the key on. You can see a little bump right there and a little voltage drop right there. And then these should line up now the same thing, this should come down and then it should level off. If this should become very erratic or the voltage spikes and then drops down, doesn't level off, then we would have a problem. I'm going to show you that with some comparisons. But for right now what I want to do is line these back up so that they overlap. Now let's look how to set the scope up. How you set your scope up for this, I'm going to be two channels, so I'm going to go into setup, and on trace one, I want to do a voltage drop. So I'm going to set it up for 20 volts, and on trace one, I'm going to use my regular clamps for trace number one. It's going to be plugged in here, trace number one. And I'm simply going to put this around the battery positive and the battery negative. So now let's look at what we got set up first. Let's crank the engine. Okay, now you see we're reading 12, almost 13 volts, and we got a voltage drop. We dropped down to about 9 or so, which is a good voltage drop, and then we stabilize. Now if this were to go up or go down, it would be bad. We need to be, to be healthy, it needs to be stable. Okay, now to look at amps on a starter. Now you know, of course, the starter pulls more amps than anything else in the vehicle. So we can't use a low amp clamp like we do for fuel pumps. We have to actually use a higher amp clamp. Now I recommend we get one that is for 600 amps. We plug it into the top, just like everything else on channel 2. Now I'm going to take this off of pause here. I'm going to go into setup and traces, trace number two, I'm going to set up for low amp 60, 60 amps. Also we're going to put the filter on. Then we go back, back, and we're ready to go. Now we're going to take this, turn it on, and you adjust the zero on this scope by trying to get it as very close to zero as you can just by rotating this. You can see it move there a little bit when I rotate this. 
So you want to move it as close to zero as you can get it. Now we take this and we simply clamp it around the wire going from the battery to the starter. Okay, now let's crank the engine. Okay, we stopped that. Let me move it back just a little bit so we can see it. <clears throat> now you can see that we've got the voltage drop that we had before comes over here and drops down up and stabilizes. Now we've got our amps. The amps come over and they spike for the high amps turning the dead engine, the engine that's not moving at all, and then these should drop down and it should stabilize, but you should see, be able to see the humps in here from the starter, much like on a fuel pump, to see if there are any dropouts. This little glitch right here is actually the key on, and it corresponds up here with the voltage drop. These spikes should be together, and they should stabilize. That means this has a very good voltage drop, it has a very good amperage spike that it comes down. Now if this amps were to climb or something like that, that would mean you've got unstable amperage pull. Now let's do an extended crank time. Okay. Now you can see we've got a very stable line here. We've got nice humps on here. So this starter is very healthy. I can play it back from the very beginning. You should have your initial high amp and the initial voltage drop, and then it should stabilize. Now let's look at a different starter. Now we moved over to a 9140 Conline Van E150. We're going to hook it up the same way. We're going to put channel 1 about the battery. And we're going to take our amp clamp and put it around the wire to the starter. Now let's look at our signal. Okay, let's crank the engine. Now you can see here this one's going down, so I just need to reverse the polarity. So I need to take my amp probe out, turn it around, and reclamp it. Start it over again. Crank the engine. Okay. Now as you look at this scope, you see the 12 volts comes across and we're dropping down to below 8. So we got quite a voltage drop there. And then it comes up and we don't have good humps. And also it's beginning to drift downward. If you look at the amps, we pull up the amps and then instead of just having nice, amp, nice humps here, it's beginning to droop down and then stabilize. So this starter is showing a lot of age. Now this particular vehicle has a complaint where it starts up fine every morning, but after you go out and drive for about an hour and that starter gets hot, then when you shut off it won't start until it cools back down. That's showing you that this starter is actually aging. Now let's look at another example. Now this next vehicle we're actually working on a 98 Dodge Caravan. Let's crank the engine on that. Now as we look at this one, we see we've got a voltage drop. starts out about 12 and it's dropping down to about nine, maybe nine and a half. But look at our amps. Our amps, we have a good spike, but we've got dropouts beginning to develop. Normally these should be good humps, but you can see they're dropping down almost to zero amps. And at the same time, our volts are going back up again. So we're losing contact in here on the armature between the brushes. I move this put these put these points where they're touching you can see that 
Now what I want to do is, I want to do this again. We're set on a two second sweep. I'm actually going to make bring that down. So we have to turn it back on. I'm going to go to sweep. And I'm going to go to 200 milliseconds instead of two seconds. I'm going to go to 200 milliseconds. We're going to crank the engine again. Okay. Now, because I'm only at 200 milliseconds, you can see those amps dropping down. They're dropping down very close to zero. See my initial amps, and then they're dropping down. Now let's change that again. Let's go back to the sweep, go to 500 milliseconds, and crank the engine. Okay, now you can see a little bit clearer. When our amps drop down to zero, our volts go back up, so we're losing our voltage drop as well. So somewhere one of the contacts in that starter is intermittently not intermittently, but re regularly dropping down to zero. So this starter is soon going to be one of those ones that just when it stops down here and momentum won't carry it past, then this starter will end up being a no start. Okay, once again, this is a test to tell you how well or how healthy that starter is. Sometimes you can catch one about to fail. Now to do this test, you do have to have a high amp clamp, a 600 clamp, because the starter pulls many more amps than the low amp clamp can tolerate and report. So once again, with a two-channel lab scope, it's just one more tool in your arsenal for diagnostics.